Today, I will be spilling all the tea you need to know regarding working at a big four public accounting firm. Work-life balance, the money, dating, the opportunities, the replaceability of everyone. Some very taboo topics. Really hoping I don't get fired for this. Hello there, welcome to the kitchen. As you can see, some tea's about to be spilled today. So you're here today because you're either interested in working for a big four, are already working for a big four, or you just like to hear me talk. It's okay, you can admit it, but you've definitely come to the right place because today I will be sharing some of the things that no one ever has told me about or gave me the wrong impression before I jumped into the trenches of Big Four Public Accounting and had the full experience myself. I'm literally praying that I don't lose my job because of this video. But then again, if my firm fires me for telling the truth, then maybe it's not a place that I actually want to work for. Quick disclaimer, before I tell you about all the juicy details of working in a big four public accounting firm, just keep in mind that this is only one narrative and it is my narrative. Your experience could be completely different, could be way better, or it could be way, way worse. From the people I talk to, such as friends also working at a big four in the US and in Canada, I do hear pretty similar narratives but definitely use your judgment now whether if you're interested in joining a big four or getting yourself out of public accounting today's sponsor is going to be a real lifesaver it is data camp data camp is an online learning platform that makes it super easy to build data analytical skills from my experience data analytical skills are super essential in big four public accounting from excel to ultrax to sql to tableau having a mastery of data analytical skills differentiates you from the crowd in a big four and saves you tons of time when it comes to work efficiency to thrive at a big four or any industry that deals with data with which is basically almost every industry nowadays. One of the most important and basic steps is to know how to leverage Excel and spreadsheet to make data make sense. Honest advice from me, invest in yourself and invest in your career. Use my link in the description and check out the first chapter of any lesson on DataCamp for free. The first brew of tea that we're going to spill is obviously going to be work-life balance. Balance. Anyone who has gone through Big Four recruiting probably have heard this mysterious term called work-life balance. Big Fours are kind of notoriously known for their long working hours, especially for busy season. And a lot of incoming people get really scared and ask about this question. You never hear anyone at these events say, we work starting at 9 a.m., sometimes even earlier, and all the way up until 2 a.m. And then you can use your judgment to see how much balance you're going to get. The reality is, even though all the big four accounting firms, as well as some mid-tier firms, really just praise their work-life balance and talk about how much they care about employees' health, mental health, well-being, etc., Yes, they do care, kind of, to some extent, but they also care about you getting all the work done. When it comes to busy season, especially for public clients who need to file on a certain date, that deadline is not negotiable. From someone who hates procrastination, before I joined the big four, I was like, oh, how bad could it be? If you plan it out nicely and pace yourself through, the deadline, it should be no problem. Like seriously guys, I had a 3.95 GPA in UCLA. Lowest grade I received was a B plus. And guess how late I've stayed up to to study throughout college, 11 p.m. That was the latest I would go. Seriously, once I go past 10, I feel like my brain just slowly declines its functionality. And it's like, oh, I'm gonna give you some crap if you keep making me 
and that's exactly how i'm built i like to plan out my day and i never really feel panicked when it comes to the deadlines and that's how i thought my big four career would be because i was like zoe like you're good at time management you never really procrastinate you're going to kill it and frankly that's not how the way it works so as an auditor at a big four accounting firm i'm pretty sure this is similar to tax as well since we work in client service a lot of things are dependent on the client and a lot of our work is dependent on the things that our clients give us meaning if those things come late we start working late work and life balance at a big four is really wacky it's never really a balance it's like sometimes really good because your client hasn't given you anything yet and you're kind of just waiting on things and then there are other days when everything that you've been waiting for for weeks or even months come at the same time and suddenly you have like 90 things to do on your to-do list and you have like two days to complete them explains why i have like three mental breakdowns a day during busy season Each team that you work on kind of has different expectations for when is it acceptable to drive off or as of now, log off. When I first started as an intern, I had some expectations of working late hours, but I really didn't know how late because I got paid overtime and the fact that everyone was trying to take care of me instead of scaring me away from the job. I usually ended around like 8, 9, or 10 during busy season, but then everyone else would stay until 2 or 3. I remember my senior just telling me one day that she got a fever, so she took a flex day, aka a flexible day, and she took off at 10 p.m. To me, that is ridiculous. Like, you are working at the expense of your health, at the expense of your sleep, for fill in the blank because I don't know what your purpose is. I mean, it's obviously a good learning opportunity, but definitely don't expect an easy nine to five job. Even during off cycle seasons, there's a vibe for us to work over 40 hours a week. We are expected to kind of read and answer emails at like 10 p.m. because they come all the time but that could be completely different based on your team your client industry your office and so on the second brew of tea we're going to have is good money i've heard like so many times during recruiting yes the job isn't the easiest but it's really rewarding plus you get good money what does that even mean i don't know good money can mean very different things for everyone as an experienced associate right now in la i make 63 grand a year after tax after insurance after all that fun jazz comes down to around three thousand and guess what my rent plus utility is two thousand two hundred every month i literally cannot eat too much each month otherwise I will be broke. Hourly wise, corporate America likes to under hire staff. They're fully utilizing you and sometimes even over utilizing you. So when we take 63 grand divided by roughly 52 weeks, it should be around $1,200 per week and $30.20 per hour. However, realistically in a busy season week, when you work 15 hours Monday to Friday and 12 hours each day on Saturday and Sunday, you divide the same 63K by roughly 90 hours a week, you get $13.42. And if the minimum wage gets raised to $15 an hour, that means the hourly wage in a big four public accounting firm could be lower than that of McDonald's. Which is fine because for me, I knew from the start that I'm not going to become rich by working at a big four public accounting firm. I think anyone in their right mind wouldn't think so, at least for the first five years. The compensation definitely gets better when you move on to a managerial role. It really depends on if your health or mental health will last until that promotion happens. For me, I just took it as an opportunity for me to advance, train myself to become a better working professional. Really, I am getting that education for free, but the big four is also paying me. So I'm viewing it in that sense stay positive the third brew of tea 
is dating. Obviously, no one's really going to talk about dating with you during recruiting. A thing I realized after working at a big four is that big four public accountants are not that dateable. The reason, say you work at a big four accounting firm, traffic pre-quarantine takes around an hour each way. Plus, the time you get off work isn't going to be at six. What a joke. Unless if it's on Friday and your team is like, oh, it's a flex day, then probably five or six. After you get off, you're going to take that long drive home. And after you take that long drive home, you're hungry. So you're going to spend some time buying food, which you don't have money for, or you have to make some food for yourself. So you make that food and you're tired AF and you kind of want to take a shower, so you do it. And then you look at the clock, it's either 9 or 10 p.m. Are you going to go out with some friends and socialize and meet new people outside of your network? I don't know, maybe you can. People kind of have their girlfriends or boyfriends way before they join the firm. And the singular, solo, noble, loners who joined without had too many things going on that they forgot to look for true love. True story. So if you want to join the big four, it's not a bad idea to start searching for your soulmate before you start full time. The fourth brew of tea that we're going to talk about is the quote unquote endless opportunities. Professionals or the recruiters are going to tell you, oh my god, working at a big four, come on. Your opportunities are endless. Once you join, you're going to have like so many doors open to you. That is technically not false advertisement, but they forgot to tell you one more thing. Opportunities have to be earned for. For example, if there is a special project or there is a special conference, great, but you have to fight for it and you have to really earn the privilege to have these opportunities because why should anyone give you the opportunity when there are so many other people just as qualified if not more a lot of things are possible at a big four but you have to and you must voice it out talk to people let them know your intention and then don't just speak with words but speak with your actions i'll give you an example so my internship got postponed to winter my full-time position would start around like six months afterwards but at the time i already graduated had my cpa exams done and i would be unemployed if i did not start in full-time immediately after my internship which is why i started talking to everyone i know of recruiters, managers on my team, seniors on my team, UCLA friend who works in tax. I begged everyone. I was like, hey, if you know there's anything I could potentially help on after my internship ends to avoid another unemployment, hit me up. That's how opportunities are made. You have to ask and sometimes beg for them. And you really have to work yourself into it. I showed everyone that I was serious about this career by getting my CPA exams all done prior to my internship and I showed everyone that I was capable of performing quality work during my internships. Just know that these opportunities aren't going to be thrown at your face. Like you have to reach and get them. Really good. Fifth brew of tea, the replaceability of the humans at a big four. No one's really super essential at a big four. Everyone's just a grass in the field. If one of them is missing, the field is still a field. Although you might be adding great value to your team, you might not be as important as you think you are. Like one second, you could be the hotshot of your team. You're taking loads of work. You're working until 2 a.m. Next minute, you could be kicked off the team. If the team wants someone that's cheaper than you or the team just thinks that you're charging too many hours and you're breaking the budget. If you're someone who wants to take leadership and become an integral part of a team and take a project from start to finish and watch it grow, watch a company grow, maybe you're thinking about a career at more of a startup at a big four everyone has their role and their specific role so when you're gone someone else can easily replace you 
I've been talking forever. My tea is gone. So that's all the tea I got to spill about a career at a big four public accounting firm. Some of these things I really wish I had known. Make sure that you don't base all your career decisions on someone else's story and maybe give it a try firsthand. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week. Bye. This is the end.